Well, hello, and welcome to Aberholt Junction. I know most of you are here for the review of the Twistlock motors, so I'll get that done in the first nine minutes. And thanks a lot for coming. If you like, please um, subscribe and like and share and all that good stuff. Um, for those of you who want the brief introduction to micro switches and CDUs, then please stay on to the end. Um, or just skip below in the chapter um, selection thingamajiggy. Um, yeah, right, let's get on with the review. Thanks for coming, folks. Okay, so first to the pros. Uh, Pico have been around for ages. Um, they've been making reliable solenoid switches now for ever and a day. Um, and this technology uses exactly the same principles. So, yeah, there should be no issues from a reliability perspective. Um, if, like me, you've got fixed boards and you can't get underneath, or sorry, you can't flip them to install stuff, you have to get underneath, then the mounting of these is an absolute piece of cake. Um, you'll see a video um, up there, um, but essentially you have a template, you drill it, you have a couple of screws that these then just twist onto, hence the name, twist lock. You can just twist it in, twist it out, and it comes out. It's an absolute cinch. That's the main selling point, really. Um, they're slightly cheaper than the slow action alternatives, but not so much now. The There's been a move in the market over the last probably year or so, and the slow actions have really come down. So these will retail. The Pico, if you buy them separately, it's about 18 quid, but you can buy them together. Sorry, excuse my hand. You can buy them together in a pack, the the motor and the micro switch. And these retail for about 16 pounds. And the slow actions retail for about 19, whether that be cobalt or tortoise. So not a huge difference um, in price, but these are slightly cheaper. Yeah, the other thing then, as well as the mountain, which is its main selling point, the other thing then is the wiring. I've left this Heath Robinson here so you can see all the inner workings, but essentially these wires, which come pre um, soldered into the unit. You just connect them up either with where he goes or chop blocks or whatever you want to use into your switch mechanism. And hey presto, you're laughing. Um, an absolute piece of cake. It probably took me 10 minutes and I have no idea how to follow wiring diagrams or anything. And it worked perfectly the first time. The micro switch, which is on the bottom, um, if you use these, excuse my hand again, these wiring looms from Pico, um, these saddle spade connectors even, connect to the bottom of the micro switch there, I'm not sure you can see that. Um, yeah, a doddle, you just slide them on, crimp them up a little bit with a pair of pliers, and Bob's your uncle. Yeah, very, very straightforward. So, yeah, the main selling points, um, ease of installation, Template's fantastic. The putting them in, taking them out, piece of cake. Um, it goes to an 18 mil board without an extension piece. That's a piece of cake as well. And then the wiring. So yeah, a little bit cheaper than the slow action. Um, exceptionally quick to install and exceptionally easy to wire. Um, I'm an absolute novice. and I did all of this first time in you know, sub half hour, as you can see in my videos, um, up in that direction there, and that's why I'm videoing as well. Yeah, so that's that's the pros. Now on to the cons. Okay, so there's two main cons really. Number one is this noise. Um, a lot of the reason people move over to the slow action is because they don't like that clunk clunk clunk. Um, I don't personally find it too bad, but, you know, as Charlie would say, you pay your money, you take your choice. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the big one. The other big one then is these will set you back um, with the micro switch, will set you back about £16 for the, for the whole unit. There's the micro switch there. Again, just twists on and off. You know, couldn't be more straightforward. Um... But if you went down the the standard solenoid approach, you know, the PL10Es and 
what have you from from Pico or Seep or Gauge Master. With the micro switch, you'll be looking up for about ten pounds in terms of cost. So sixteen pounds for this, and ten for the solenoid, the standard solenoid. So if you've got you know ten points or 15 points or whatever on your layout, you know, you could be talking the best part of 50 pounds fairly quickly. So yeah, noise and cost. Now, the million dollar question, would I buy them? And do I think you should buy them? That is the million dollar question. So, am I happy with my purchase? Um, I currently have six of these, and I think I have about 30 points to do, I think, in total, or 30 motors that I need. Will I carry on with these, or will I switch to a standard solenoid or go to slow action? I'm going to stick with these. Um, I'm happy. Um, I think it is worth the premium to pay um, for the ease of installation. I only get about an hour a week in the shed, um, so I need to progress as quickly as I can and as you can see from the progress I haven't made um, that clearly is a challenge so for me yes against normal solenoids the slight premium you have to pay I think is worth it if you don't like the clunk then I, I would then go slow action so essentially it's that trade-off do you like that standard solenoid clunk click or would you prefer slow action? Um, the cost is nigh on the same, um, you know, three pound difference essentially per unit. Um, the installation of this is much easier, but you know, if you can't stand that noise and want to go over slow action, then yeah, obviously go for that option. So yeah, that's the, that's the billion dollar question. Would I go for them? Yes, um, if you can, stand that noise and actually like the noise because you know it's changed go for them if you obviously if you want the slow action then this isn't this doesn't compare to the standard solenoids and if you've got skills to go under your board and you know install a standard seat or um, pico point motor then go for that option um, it's much cheaper but yeah i'm i'm thoroughly pleased for the beginner the non-solderer um lack of time person this is perfect and it's only a slight premium but you know it's probably two wagons <laughs> you know the way the wagon prices are going at the moment it's probably two wagons difference for my whole layout so yeah i'm thoroughly pleased piece of cake um and i'm going to be getting another 20 of them so yeah thank you pico um if you like this video um please subscribe um yeah, and thanks a lot for coming. If you're here for the quick um, introduction on micro switches um, and CDUs, by all means, um, I'll see you just after this. Um, for those who are just here for the review, really appreciate you coming. Yeah, if you like this sort of thing, this is typical for my videos, um, and I do one every couple of weeks. So thanks a lot for coming, and hopefully see you again at Abba Halt Junction. Cheers. Right, folks, for those of you who've stayed around for this bit, um, I've had a few queries on my Facebook, YouTube and Twitter on connection, uh, connecting a CDU to um, or between the power supply and the um, point motor. Um, this is the CDU I'll be using or I do use. Um, it's the Gauge Master one. There's a description down in the in the show more notes. Um, I'm also using the Gauge Master power supply. Um, yeah, I actually got hold of um, Pico directly to confirm the power supply that they needed um, for the point motor. And it is um, 16 volt AC. Um, on their website, it, it actually says DC, but yeah, it's an AC power supply that they're, that they're looking for. Okay, so let's um, quickly show you how to do this. Um, here's a wiring diagram. So essentially, you're taking the um, the output power, uh, the red and the black, from your um, converter here, from the Gage Master 
WM1 power adapter. You're putting that through the inside of the CDU. Helpfully it's on there and it's also on the back of the CDU as well. Uh, it's written there, I'm not sure that comes out, but yes, it, it is written on there so you can't make any mistakes. Into there and then um, out then back to your um, switch and then onto your point motor. I only have one point motor on the layout, but um, I'll show you this construction anyway. It's obviously typically used when you have more than one, um, but it also acts as a bit of a, almost a surge protector. Um, these switches, which are passing contact switches, if they continually pass, as opposed to um, a passing contact, if they continually pass current, it can actually knock out your motor. So it's an added little um, safety, uh, you know, belts and braces, if you like, for the um, for your motors. And they're really expensive, so it's good to protect them. Um, apologies if you can see this red light flashing. Um, in reality, it, it doesn't, so apologies for that. Okay, let's get on to wire it up and we'll see how it throws. So just for reference, um, this is how it throws at the moment. So yeah, it's quite a nice forceful throw anyway, and there's no issue with it. And I've thrown it more than a hundred times now, and there's been no problem. Um, but yeah, let's put the CDU in and uh, see how she behaves. I uh, use Wago connectors, um, these lever type connectors, which are not cheap, um, but are very straightforward to use. So yeah, it's a bit of a doddle um, pulling them out. Um, this is the the two leads that go to the um, my switch. Um, yeah, so I'll just go off camera now quickly and screw all the other cables in the two wires to the CDU and the two wires back to the levers, and um, we'll get this thrown. Okay. Just note um, when I'm doing the wiring, um, I've disconnected the power. Um, there's no big warning notices about electric shocks and things but i know in school <laughs> we used to throw away uh, throw around live capacitors and people catch them and get a shock so and um, these look like quite big juicy capacitors so yeah i've switched the power off um and yeah i'm gonna do it all dead and then i'll bring it to charge okay so that's this all wired up very heath robinson at the moment um but yeah essentially um red and black from the from the power uh, adapter into the left hand side of the capacitor unit and then red and black then back out to my switch yeah took two minutes um including cutting the wires so yeah very very straightforward um let's give it a throw and let's see how uh, how she behaves Yeah, it does sound slightly more forceful, but as I said, even without the unit, there was no problem. Um, this is designed for up to six um, motors switching at once. Um, I certainly won't be doing anywhere near that many, so I can just have one um, for my whole layout. So yeah, ideal, very straightforward. Um, I recommend the Gauge Master one. It, um, yeah, it's got good reviews. Um, I've been using it for a while and it's, yeah, it's got not too many hassle. Easy to do, easy to set up. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and very, very simplistic electrical diagrams to follow. <laughs> a lot of them are not that straightforward. Yeah, very straightforward. Now all I need to do is, is make it look lovely, <laughs> which is the bit I struggle with. Okay, so that's the CDU. Um, and now we'll just quickly touch on micro switches and um modifying electro frog points and from a beginner's perspective what you need to be thinking about which i hadn't thought about and hence why i'm going to give you this quick 30 second um opinion piece on it cheers so just quickly um there's numerous numerous videos on this that do it very well so i'm not gonna just repeat the same thing 
Um, but this is a Pico um, right hand curved electro frog point. And there's instructions actually on the back of the point. It actually comes with them. And if you do the modification, which essentially, I don't know if you can see it, those wires are tiny. Um, if you do the modification, which is cutting those two wires there, um, and then soldering droppers across those, and then attaching up your micro switch um, frog polarity switcher to this really fine cable here, which I think hopefully you can just about see there. Um, yeah, they that's what, you know, um, Dean Park, Chadwick, all, all the Everard, all the big guys say. And then they say, oh yeah, and then switch the frog, frog polarity just on as an off the cuff thing. That's, it's not an off the cuff thing, right? If you, if you do the modification and don't have a micro switch or something changing the polarity here, because you have insulated in rail joiners on the end there, what you actually then get is a dead piece of track here. So normally, as it's set up now, you know, without that being cut out and what have you, normally this change of direction here brings positive and negative through the point and through the frog. As soon as you've cut those wires, then that um, electrical current does not pass up to that area. And from the, uh, yeah, from here onwards, about, about there, from there onwards, you then have dead track. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nightmare. Just to show you this in, in illustration, um, there's my point there. I hope you, I hope you can see it right. Actually, let's, let's reposition and you'll all see this a little bit closer now. Okay. So I've, um, put two, um, buffer, uh, lights on the track. Uh, this is the main line now and that's the crossover and so you can see quite clearly hopefully you can see that the red light is on there and hopefully it's coming through on camera and when it switches um the other red light comes on now typically so i'm just gonna move this back a second if it was if this point was unmodified the the um switch blades would actually be doing the current transfer but that's not actually the case what's actually happening is at the bottom of the twist lock is a micro switch and that change is what's actually powering those lights so to get power past this point here sorry to get power past this point here you're actually relying on the micro switch changing the frog polarity so it's critical if you're going to do the modification, make sure you put a micro switch on the back, bottom of whatever point mode you use. Yeah, it's I, I can illustrate it here actually with a piece of paper. See? So that's completely and utterly blocking the transfer of metal on metal there. And we've still got a red light on. And that's because it's going through the micro switch and coming up that way. This what actually happens at this switch point is irrelevant. I mean, the, the that the lever obviously has to move over to change the micro switch. But other than that, you could have dirt in there, sand, ballast, whatever you want. So yeah, if you are uh, if you're going to do the modification to electro frog points, get yourself a micro switch because I didn't, and I had a lot of stalling locos, and I was confused for ages. So yeah, um, thanks for your queries, guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Um, you clearly lose, lose stam stamina, as they would say on Brexit cast and newscast. Um, yeah, appreciate you all coming. Um, please like and subscribe um, for more of this sort of video. Um, beginners getting to grips with uh, double O. Uh, yeah, cheers, folks. Stay safe. Bye bye. And coming next time on Aberholt Junction, TTS Sound Decoder in Hornby. Tornado, what a beautiful, beautiful thing she is. This is part of the Abedonian um, train pack. Uh, there's another couple of wagons as well. But yeah, I'm going to compare normal TTS speakers versus an iPhone speaker in this Tornado. Uh, yeah, first time with um, TTS, I've used um, Lock Sound. So yeah, I'll let you know what I think.
yeah, she is an absolute beauty, this logo. And part of my heritage line, and I'm very excited to get steam at Abba Hall Junction. See you next week.